Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. Today I am excited to talk to you about the newest operator teaser we've been given for the next season of Rainbow Six. Who is he and what can he do? Let's talk about it next. Siempre dejan algo atrás. Okay, so that was the full teaser trailer for the newest operator that's being added to the game. We're gonna let that just kind of loop in the background a little bit as well as take a look at a few other images. This operator's name is Jackal, and as you can see, he seems to have the ability to track the footprints of the defenders he's chasing. He is an attacker. You can tell by this thumbnail image here that he has a large assault rifle. This is listed as the C7E assault rifle. Doing a search for that doesn't really turn up anything specific, although it looks like it's built on the Colt weapons platform. There are the C7s, which the Canadian Army uses. We have the C8 in the game. However, they don't have a variation called the C7E, but it could still be a custom variant on that rifle. His other primary weapon is a really odd choice. The alternate primary is the PDW-9. So this is like the SMG-11 or the Bearing 9 that we got back in Season 4, and it just makes a really weird choice for an attacker to have as a primary choice. His secondary weapons will be the USP-40, this is the pistol that he was shown using in this trailer, and something called the ITA-12S. I actually have no idea what that is. It doesn't turn up anything when I try to research it. There are a few weapons in Rainbow Six where they don't use the actual name. There's probably a licensing reason behind that. This kind of thing definitely has a precedent in Rainbow Six Siege. I mean, if you take a look at the shotgun that GIGN uses, they call it the SGCQB, but its real life name is actually the Fabarm SDASS Tactical. Of course, they probably could have shortened the name down a bit, but the real reason they don't use that name is probably more likely to do with something like a licensing issue or a similar reason. Now, combined with the fact that he has a primary weapon choice of a PDW, which is a small weapon that burns through ammo on a fast rate of fire, and then pair that with the ability that it's shown using where he's tracking some kind of a roaming defender, there's a high likelihood that this operator is going to be a three-speed fast-moving operator. If that's the case, you could actually build an entire squad of fast-moving three-speed operators now without having to resort to a recruit. He could still be a two-speed operator, but between his tracking ability and the choice of a very light, small, and fast submachine gun as primary, I'm thinking he's probably designed to be a quick mover. It'll be interesting to see how his assault rifle functions. It could even possibly be a more of a DMR style function, but I don't think that that would pair all that well with his ability. I'm not really sure though. We'd have to see how it plays out. I'm guessing it's probably more of a conventional assault rifle. So let's analyze this trailer a little bit more in detail. Here we can see he's entering the building as an attacker. In the next shot, we can see the optic light up on his faceplate there. It's actually on the helmet right about where the forehead is. This seems like it translates over to some kind of a HUD overlaid onto some kind of goggles or visor or something like that. Now, if that black light ring on his helmet is really as bright as it looks in the teaser trailer, then that's going to make this an ability that comes with a cost. Sure, you can use it to try to find where they are, but you're also going to light up like a Christmas tree from a far distance out when you use it. Another interesting thing to note as we take more of a close-up is that he has this pistol out. This is the USP-40, and it almost makes you wonder if his ability is limited to the use of a pistol while he's using his tracking ability. An argument could be made for this either way. On one hand, it could be a good balancing aspect. For instance, IQ has to pull out her pistol when she's using her scanner. However, it does take the use of her other hand to do it. She has it on her wrist and she has to hold up that other arm. So it really doesn't make sense for her to be able to hold her primary weapon at that time. In Jackal's case, he certainly has both hands available to use. The scanner is mounted on his helmet, so he shouldn't have to be restricted to it for any reason that would have to do with that. But it could be done for balancing reasons as well. On the other hand, maybe just showing him with a pistol made for a cool look on the trailer and it doesn't have any kind of a restriction like that at all. Now we take a look at what the scanner looks like here as it's functioning. This is an actual in-game screenshot. You can see up at the top, they tried to hide it with the black letterboxing there, but you can see the round timer up at the top in the center. It's just a little a few rows of pixels there showing through. And then to the left of that, you can see the bottom of what the operator's icon must be. You would have the other information at the bottom of the screen, but the letterboxing cut that off there too. 
So we're getting this view kind of as we're looking through his augmented reality goggles or visor there. So this would be kind of overlaid on the screen, it looks like. And we don't know all the details exactly of how the footprint tracking works. For instance, do they fade after a certain amount of time? Does it change based on the speed of the operator you're tracking? Are fast movers, you know, maybe different than slow movers? Are there certain surfaces that footprints aren't left on? What's the range of this? If you look down the hallway or will you get from one end of the hallway all the way down to the other, even on some of the longest stretches in the game? Also, while this looks like a cool ability to help you find a roamer that might be hiding in some areas off by themselves, things could get really messy if you look on the screen in say the objective area or leading into the objective area and you might have footprints crossing all over the place. Something like that would be really messy and confusing to look at, which leads me to believe there's some kind of a time where the footprints are available to be up for and then maybe they fade after a certain amount of time has gone by because otherwise things would just be a mess and then you could have people messing with you and just kind of crisscrossing their paths and you wouldn't know who went where. So you'll see recent movement only but not anything that's been there since like the beginning of the round. Now this could be the bulk of his ability or there could be other features added onto it. For instance, will these footprints illuminate even through smoke? That could be really useful. If you flood the objective area with a bunch of smoke grenades and then you go in with him, you might not be able to see your targets, but if they're moving around, you can at least see where they've gone to and what corners they might be hiding in. With everything blocked by smoke, they won't see you coming, but maybe you would be able to get the drop on them by following the footprint trail. That would be a cool feature if it works like that. It's hard to tell, we won't know for sure until we get a closer look at this operator in the Rainbow Six Invitational. That runs from February 3rd through the 5th, and they'll be doing a little bit each day, breaking down in the middle of the semifinals and the finals, giving us more information, finally culminating in a live demonstration match showing what the operators can do. Now we do know the other operator is Mira. She was teased back in the mid-season reinforcements as somebody that was helping out Tachanka with his shield upgrade. Chances are we'll probably be getting an operator teaser video for her sometime in the next week, possibly Monday or Tuesday, so be on the lookout for that. As soon as they drop that, we'll also take a look and break it down. Now as always, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, tips, tricks, reviews, walkthroughs, and more for Rainbow Six Siege, then please like and subscribe. You can also follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.